Well, what I know, uh, we we know that uh, some of the artifacts found up in the Pinocchi Range are have been dated back to 260 A.D., 1800 years ago, and that those tools that they found are likely part of the uh, artifacts from the Cahokian culture. The people, uh, seven and a half, eight foot tall, uh, corn-fed people in a palisaded uh, structure down in East St. Louis. They had a pyramid down there that rivals anything they got in U Egypt or South America. And uh, and the thing is, is, is that that's where the history from what we know begins to be charted. You bring it up to the 1800s when Ojibwe and Dakota Sioux were offered allotments to become good U.S. citizens and settle down rather than being confined to the reservation. And we find out that 260 indigenous people took their allotments rather than being confined to reservations. One is my uh, great, great grandfather. His allotment was just down the road here a little bit on the Ashland County line, which is down, just down the road here. The people who brought in eight or 900 miners from Maine uh, are the same mining company uh, who prospected this area of Moore Park Road. Uh, they brought in squatters on the, the 80 acre allotment that my great great grandfather had up here and throughout. John Trudell's great great uh, grandmother, uh, Elizabeth Trudell, which is right alongside the Harvest Education Learning Project. Uh, the, the Sioux script were 160 acres, the Ojibwe script were 80 acres. And uh, what we do know is that uh, over 260 allotments were given out. And it seems that, it appears that we cannot find at this point a living descendant of anyone that occupied those allotments. That same mining company discovered a body of an Ojibwe woman named Wabigans uh, at Brownstone Falls as the Tyler Forks came into the Bad River in 1857. And they sold her body to the Barnum Museum in New York, uh, which experienced two fires during the 1860s. Supposedly there was a number of stories written about her, but it seems to me that the des desecration of uh, people uh, began then with the mining companies. 240 of them at one point were formed. <laughs> a lot of them were speculative investors, which reminds me of what this alleged mining company is. That's what they call themselves. When you go to Hibbon and other places, you go into a mining company office, you know you're in a mining company office. But it appears that this group is more of a hedge fund speculators being funded by people with the idea that maybe something might might come out of it. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there's a lot of dynamics to what's been going on here that we have to look out for, and it's very broad. There's the legal defense. There's the citizens of Iron County trying to empower them. They're trying to run on the county board of supervisors. Uh, and change the dynamics, even if it forces people who ran unelected all 15, two years ago, to answer hard questions, because we just sense that this thing has been so fast-tracked that there's a lot of things that are unanswered. Part of the reason we're here today mocking this law, as you know, you're all inside the forbidden zone. Okay. The Fusha markers are over there. Um, but. We wanted to show something. You're going to have to come to the other side here in order for us to uh, uh, exemplify if people would move back a little bit mm -hmm. from the fencing. Okay. Move back a little bit. Every time we turn around, we find this company taking shortcuts. Okay. Uh, the minute you find asbestos form rocks, they eliminate the site from testing and say, oh, it's not up there. And they're going to wet pack things so it don't blow around. And they're going to dry pack things so it don't get wet and all that. But this is what I think about the engineering that GTAC has, right? We're locked out of here. 
Unless you have a key to get in here, you are locked out of the forbidden zone. Of course, unless you uh, decide to just kind of pick this up. <laughs> Like this. <laughs> Way to go, Paul! We have here people, uh, a lot of people that I uh, want to give a chance to uh, uh, speak. They're coming back here. I'd like to ask one of our elders forward uh, to say a few words. What I'm here for is in the next month and a half, if I come back to Iron County, I'm going to find Finns and Norwegians and Scandinavians and Italians hiding out in places who've never voted. I want to try to talk them into registering to vote. If I remember right off the top of my head, the chairman of the Iron County Board of Supervisors was elected in office with something like 26 votes and ran unopposed, you know. And so we need to begin lifting people up at the local level while we do all the other things we have to do. Um, I think the sheriff decided that he didn't want to hand out a couple hundred citations today, so uh, he's not here. But in talking to the sheriff, he understands that as a law enforcement office officer, he is stuck between a rock and a hard spot, being told to enforce the law, which changes uh, depending on what GTAC wants, and trying to accommodate the ro people's rights to freedom of speech and protests. I intend to try to confine it within those areas that are legal and help assist Iron County people in a positive way. Hopefully we can change it at the Iron County Board Supervisor level. Maybe when the EPA and the Army Corps of Engineers, maybe other people will find things that help with the dynamics of derailing this bad project. And we're all anxious. We'd like to have it stopped today, but we may have to settle for working with what we have a little bit at a time. Our numbers keep growing, and that's a very healthy thing. I want to give a, an elder from the Bad River Ojibwe tribe, who, by the way, is running for office as well as the county board supervisor in Ashland.